had the Arkham Auto SUV for a little over 10 months and I put over 6,000 miles on it. So I thought I'd talk about what is it like to own a short range EV and uh, an SUV in particular. Well, the question that most people have about it is where do you charge it and isn't charging terribly inconvenient? Uh, having to stop for hours when you need to charge. Well, the answer to the first question nullifies the second question. You charge it at home. But this whole notion of range anxiety doesn't exist with an EV. Uh, it does exist with a gasoline vehicle because with a gasoline vehicle, your range is different every single time. You know, how many times are you, you caught thinking, oh crap, I need to stop for gas, or I don't know if I can make it to the appointment without stop for gas on the way home. Yeah. But with an EV, it never happens because you charge at home. So you, you always have your full range every single day. Uh, so you're never going to get an EV that can't handle your everyday routines, your regular, you know, where you normally go. Uh, so uh, charging is not an issue. Range is not an issue. You never even think about range unless you take an extraordinarily long trip, which my wife and I have done many times this summer. We've uh, probably taken more trips into neighboring cities than in the last, uh, this summer than like the last four years combined. And uh, it's actually not inconvenient either because, you know, when we do, we do it to charge, you plan it out. And so we charge at a place where we're going to eat. If we're, you know, we're making a 90 mile round trip or something, of course, we're going to want to stop to eat, right? So we're never making a stop just for the sake of refueling the vehicle like you do with a gasoline vehicle. We're simply, we eat where there's a charging spot. So it's actually more convenient to have the EV than having a, a gasoline vehicle. Not to mention the cost. I mean, a 90 mile round trip, that's gonna cost you 20, 30 bucks uh, uh, with a gasoline vehicle. With the, with the SUV, it costs maybe two bucks. Yeah, a lot of the charging places near restaurants and casinos are free. So, because they want your business. So you don't actually pay anything until you get back home uh, and charge and charge overnight. So it's uh, not a problem at all. Uh, you know, obviously I'm not taking the freeways. Uh, that's going to drain the battery a lot quicker. So, but if a vehicle like the SUV, you really want to uh, cruise with anyways, more like you know, a cruising vehicle. And uh, so you kind of want to enjoy the scenery. I mean, I could take the freeway, but it, it would drain the battery so quick. Now, the FUV probably also has an advantage over simil you know, similarly ranged vehicles in that it's so much lighter. It, uh, it doesn't take as much energy to refill it. So, you know, on a level two charger, you know, we stop to eat, we'll maybe there for an hour and a half, and we're going to get back, well, you know, an hour and a half, I'll get us back about 50, you know, almost 50 50 percent of our energy 45 40 40 55 percent of our energy so yeah, it's not a problem at all it, you know we didn't have enough range to do it you know stay in town all day and make it back home so yeah it's never been a problem at all um, so as far as the FUV is concerned uh, I have had a, a problem with a, a brake failure warning light that's false when the temperature gets warm. Uh, I had the read switch adjusted to make that not happen because it was happening when it was over 50 degrees. Uh, after the adjustment, it happens when it's over 80 degrees. But a little quicker. Uh, but uh, that's just, you know, I, I'm used to it now, so it, it, it's not really a major concern. When it is cold, I do have a, a, a loud noise from the motors when they're not warmed up. Um, it used to happen only when it was like below, you know, 40, but now it happens even when it's like 50, 60 degrees uh, in the mornings. So I'm not sure what that's about. The Arkhamoto technician said it, yeah, you know, they're not really sure what it is, but it doesn't affect performance or anything. It's just going to sound terrible. Or, or terrible. But um, other than that, it's been trouble free. Um, you know, adjust the parking brake cable every every you know, five or six hundred miles. And uh, that's it. You know, no oil changes, no 
chain adjustments, chain lube, or anything like that. It's been an uh, absolute pleasure to have. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I've really got to say right now. It's a nice view of the lights here going down into Minden. We're going down Kingsbury Grade into Minden, Nevada here from uh, South Lake Tahoe. And uh, just, just after sunset. So, yeah, that's, all, that's, that's really uh, all I wanted to talk about. So, hope you enjoyed this little POV video here. And as you can see, it handles pretty well. Uh, I just need to find a time when I can stop the camera now. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Oh, didn't get it. Here we go.